Pezzi. Jojo. Adrian. Rita. Rita. Eddie. Carl. Jamie. Jamie. Dean. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Hi. <coughs> Can't hear any of you. <laughs> because I've got my ears out. <laughs> well, you all heard it all before, there's no newbies here at all. And uh, put different labels or words on it. Some call it Neo Advaita. I don't know where they get that from because how many Advaitas could there be? Not a new one or an old one, it's just Advaita. Non dual, not two. So how could it be anything other than a one without a second? Only that. So that's what we point to. And uh, the description of Advaita, they say it's not not two. One without a second. And they put that without a second. Does it cut out that implication there could be anything other than that one? One without a second, not two. Only that. That is all there is. And that is really enough. That's the simplicity of it. But we have this habit of conceptualising. trying to work things out with the mind. And so there are myriads of different takes on it. And so we miss the simplicity. Put all these concepts or words or labels on it and get lost in the word. The word is not the thing. What is it? Hey. <laughs> and you know that if you investigate and have a little bit of a look. The word water, can you drink it? The word fire, does it burn your mouth? Can you cook with it? So what's this word I or me? We take it to be I, this person, or me, this person, this separate entity, this individual. So there's the problem. We've divided it. <coughs> Instead of leaving it as it is, simple, that simple, that we miss it. There's nothing simpler than one. And it's not even one. And they tell you this, they say, the problem is ignorance. We think when we hear that term, we talk, we're dull or stupid, we're not understanding. <coughs> but it's not that at all. It just means we ignore the simplicity and the reality of it. We turn our backs on it and focus into all these conceptual ideas, thoughts and feelings and try to make something of them. So it's there all the time but being ignored. So what we po try to point out here or describe the description can never be the described. Understand that. Because of the, because the word is not the real, the description is not described, the map's not the territory. You know those things. Well look at this and realize that if we're pointing to the Sat Chitananda Namareva is how they put it. In Hinduism, sat is existence. 
Chitta's consciousness. Ananda is loving to be. Oh, the bliss of being. Nama Rupa, Nama is the names we put on ourselves. We've all got names, our parents have put on it. And Rupa is the form or the body. Nama Rupa, those two factors, they say, is our Maya. Maya is an image, it's not real, illusion. But the existence, consciousness and happy to be, uh, have a look at that. Are you existing right now? And you can't say you are not, can you? So you know that you are. So you are already existing. And you are co certainly consciousness or not unaware. And you realise that, yes, I'm conscious. I'm not unaware. And you're happy to be. None of you want to be dead right now. You'd rather be alive than dead. So you already are that Satchitananda. <coughs> How many of us have been searching for many years trying to become that? <laughs> Stupid, isn't it? Trying to become something you already are. And the that, what do we think the that is? Well, when you have a look at it, everything is that. And you know that. Because you say, that's the chair I'm sitting in. That's the room the chair's in. That's the carpet that's on the floor. That's the tree. That's the flower. That's the sky. That's the world. That's the ocean. Everything is already that, but which we discriminate again with the words, with the labels. But that is, that is what I am. And if that, if I am that, that is what I am. Again, we are going to go from there. You're going to go for some long-winded search. If I do this, or do some of the things they tell me to do, meditate, or tell myself a story, or go and visit this one, or see that one, do all these practices, which It's been corrupted into all these practices and things like that and lost its simplicity. And people do it for years and years and years. And it never happens. And that makes it worse because they've got the concept they are this person. And if I'm not understanding or seeing it, I'm a bad person. The world's against me. I'm not happy. So we keep putting all these concepts, different concepts and ideas on this particular seeming entity, this person, and get lost in the words, in the concepts. So much so that people <coughs> can suicide, the traumas and dramas get so bad, can suicide because of this. Panjali, the first yoga teacher, says, Understanding, right understanding is needed. The Sagara tells you and says understanding is all. Recognising or understanding your true nature, what you already are. There is a knowing there that you are, which you can't deny, negate. But uh, what have we done? We learnt words. We learnt words from our parents. When were you born? When you look at it, you can't say you were born. Why can't you say you were born? 
Because how do you how can you say you were born if you had no words? So you can't remember your birth. And it's not till afterwards somebody tells us you were born and you take it on then. I was born. And what are you saying was born? I. What's I? A concept, a thought, a word. And we think this concept or I was born. And uh, our parents have given us names and uh, might be Bob or Bill or Jane or somebody else would be the name. And naturally, if somebody asks you who you are, you'll say, I am Jane or I am Bob. Instead of recognising that you are the absolute, you are the great perfection, you are the reality, because that is all there is, that is what we are ignoring, and we're taking on the word instead of seeing the reality. And the belief comes about that this person, this Bob, is what I am. And then all sorts of concepts up. I'm a boy, or a man, or good, I'm good, or I'm bad, and the parents tell me I'm bad or terrible. Or I'm separate, or I am a person. And that person comes from the Another word, the Latin word persona, the mask. So if it's a mask that I believe myself this person, what's the mask? I'm Bob the Australian, the good fellow. Isn't that all concepts, ideas, words? So I put words, more words, that describe to try and describe myself instead of seeing that the word is not the real, the words a conceptual image I put upon myself and being what I really am, that pure presence awareness, the absolute beingness, the presence awareness. Now I'm taking these concepts or words to be what I am. And I've got to make this conceptual image, this person that's not doing so well and is unhappy or angry or fearful, got to make it whole or complete. And I've got this conceptual image that's going on, which we call mind. And this, like the thoughts or the words, I or me, make the seeming entity in other words I have to become this or that word and think we'll get it with a concept a realisation or seeing this conceptual image if this image I've got is not a correct one I look into it a bit further or meditate or say this, I'll get a better image, image and that'll be the one. And so all sorts of images are being formed. And the Sagarita tells you, nothing can trouble you except in your own imagination. So see what you're doing. We're imaging in or making cre mental or conceptual images. I'm a good fellow, I'm not so good, or I'm unhappy, or I do this, and this is good and this is bad. Creating all these images and think through this image, one image will hit upon will be the right image. Didn't they say the so-called God, if you believe in God, that's another image or concept. God created man in his image and likeness. 
So immediately we got that on. We think God, instead of saying that God, the, God, God is the absolute, we now, instead of thinking, He created man in His image and likeness, well, we think that God is the image and likeness of a man. So God's a big daddy up in the sky, a human shape or form. And we've got to become one with it or find it. Not seeing it the other way. Tells you in the Bible, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. That's all that God is, a word, a label. All things were made by him. Have a look at that, isn't it correct? Is there anything there that you see? The room, the tree, the chair, the flower, the sky, the space, which we haven't put words on. There was nothing made without the word. So it's all words or labels, but the word is not the thing. Take the word water. Try and drink the word, swim in the word or wash in the word. You can't. Why? Because the word is not the thing. It's not the water. Take the word fire. Try and burn yourself with the word fire. Heat yourself with it. Cook with it. You can't, because it's the Word again. Take any of the other words, it's saying they do the same thing. So you see and recognise the Word is not the real. Take this word, I, or me. What is it? Is I, this pattern we call a body, mind, or what is the pattern? It's made up, what is this body? Body is made up of elements, which we put labels on the elements, air, earth, fire, water, space, all elements, but they're not those labels we put on and that's what the body consists of. All these elements can be broken down. Take the air out of your body. How long would you last without it? So see that the body is made up of elements. Take the water. Body 60% water. Take the fire, the body temperature. Get off the earth, get out of space. When you investigate it, you'll see these elements can all be broken down to subatomic particles which you can't see or know, into pure emptiness. So this body that we're labelling my body, made up of elements, and elements been broken down into vibration, energy, the body is not how it appears to be. And the me, or the I, that's claiming it is just a concept also. What's this I thought when you look at it? You say, I am. What's that tell you? That I amness means there's a sense of presence here. That I am is this immediacy, isn't it? Aren't you that presence awareness right now? that translates through the mind as the thought, I am. And when are you saying that? Like all th thoughts are present. If you've got a past thought and you're speaking it now, you're saying it presently. You can't say it in the past because the past is gone. You can't say it in the future because the future hasn't happened. It can only be said presently. And it's spontaneous. 
doesn't last. So we put all these words on ourselves, I'm Bob, the Australian, the good fellow, the happy, I'm not sad, and all the rest of it, and form a conceptual image. Got no substance, there's nothing solid about it, or no independent nature. It cannot stand up on its own. So recognize that, that I am this presence awareness, right here, right now. And that presence awareness is absolute. It can't be divided. Nothing can be added to the absolute. Nothing can be taken away because remember, what are we talking about? Non-duality. One without a second, not two. Only that. Absolute is not duality. It can't be duality. Duality implies other than one, two. And absolute is not even one. It's prior to the one even before the thought or idea or concept of one comes about. And that is all there is. So, but we've got this sense of presence. Our parents have told you your Bill or your Jane or whatever your name is. And somebody asks you who you are, well, we've believed that because we've never questioned it. Our parents never told us any different. So I've taken away. So if somebody asks you who you are, you'll say, oh, I am Bob, or I am Jane. And then they've got their concept, and they'll see that pattern, shape, and form. And so that's what Bob is, or that's what Jane is, this body mind. And I don't like what it says, or I don't like its, its looks, or its feelings, or all the rest of it. So there'll be some concepts, small concepts and ideas formed about that. And the sense of separation gets pronounced, more pronounced and longer, further away. The more you think talk and think about it, the further away you wander from the truth. As it tells you in the Hang Sing Ming. Stop talk, talking and thinking and there's nothing you will not be able to know. In that pure knowing, pure being, pure sense of presence, without adding to it, without taking it away from it, that is all there is. And that's the saying, know the truth. Knowing you are that and knowing it as the truth, and the truth will set you free. You're free of the belief that you need to become something or need to become something. Duality is dualism, me and the other. Me and the other is relationship, relative to. So all relationship, and you see we've got all these relationships, are relative to. Dualism. When you recognise it's absolute, you're not relating to anything because you know everything is that which you are. And it will naturally bring if they're open to it, what is recognised in each set and pattern will recognise itself in the other. 
a natural there'll be a natural merging or bringing to itself what is necessary for the fulfillment of that life. And amazingly enough, it does. Now we're so stacked in the belief we are the separate entity and so constantly relating to it and habitually that we think we need to do something about it. Try and fix it. Try and fix the unfixable, the absolute. Did that for years. Caused all sorts of problems. Sometimes when I wasn't focused on it too much, the clarity would come up and everything would fall into place. But then as soon as the questioning came about and the thinking came about, it had come up again, the, con the conflict. Conflict is disease, uneasiness. Another word for uneasiness is disease. Is disease. Not at ease, no longer the ease of being. The natural, spontaneously setting, settling in the fact of the beingness that you are. Not being this or being that. Because being this or being that, you need to put a concept. But ask yourself right now. You call yourself a human being, don't you? Yep. And you call God the supreme being. So what have we done? We've conceptually divided that beingness. But what does beingness imply? Are you not being right now? And you say, no, I'm being. And being is not becoming. It's not in the concept of time. Because in being, becoming implies a future time. Being is now. It's immediacy. And recognise that. And there can be possibly be no becoming in it whatsoever because time is a mental concept when you investigate it. Have a look and see. Ask yourself this, is there a past if I don't think about it? Well, if you hear that, what do you need to do? I need to look and see what's there without a thought. And if I'm not picking the thought up that's there, waiting to be picked up, or not pushing it away, recognising it just as it is, leaving it without adding to it or taking from it, see how long it's going to stop there. And what can I say without a thought? Well, I can't say it's good, bad, pleasant, painful, anything at all about it. And so then you might understand what Shakespeare told you 400 years ago when he says there's nothing either good or bad but thinking makes it so. The Sagara tells you the same thing with different words when he says nothing can trouble you. Nothing at all can trouble you. Wouldn't that be good to know and believe and recognise and see that it's true if it's true and there's nothing can trouble me? Wouldn't that be great? Nothing can trouble you except in your own imagination. Well, he's telling you what the cause was all. Imagining, imaging in. What's imaging in? Doesn't it mean creating conceptual or mental images? An image is not the thing. Look in the mirror, what do you see? You'll see reflections in it or images. You might see your face in there. That that mirror is full of images and reflections. You can't say they're not there. But go up to the mirror and try and pull any single image or reflection out of it. 
You can't. Because you can't grab it because it's only a reflection or image in the mirror. And see what we're doing. That word imagination. We are imaging all these sorts of concepts in this thing we call mind. Now that mind that we're looking at is clarity. It's clear and empty like the mirror. Suffused with pure intelligence. The knowing what to do. And what are we doing? We're corrupting it and contaminating it. We're taking the reflections that appear in it to be real. Trying to grasp a reflection or do something with it. Haven't been very successful, have we? <coughs> because there's lots of troubling going on. Nothing can trouble you except your own imagination. And we're in sorts all sorts of mental and conceptual trouble means we haven't been very successful or we probably not even bothered to look at it. And we don't until something innately within us says this is not good enough. I've been looking into this and there's still all these fears, anxieties and stressing and this belief in God hasn't helped me at all. I prayed for this and thought about that. Sometimes I've been lucky enough and fluke and get a little bit, but it still hasn't caused the problem to cease. But does it dawn on you that maybe I'm looking in the wrong direction? Maybe I'm going to find, won't find the answer in the mind, because every direction I looked has always been in the mind. Have a look at that. What other direction can you look if it's not in the mind? It's not until you realise, which we don't want to look, the only other direction we look is when the emptiness is there. The full stop is there. Recognise, as Shakespeare said, there's no thing that's either good or bad and recognise who or what am I. I am that no thing. I'm not the body. I'm not the mind. I'm not the person. This body is a thing. This thing we call mind is a thing. The tree is a thing. The carpet's a thing. The space in the room is a thing. Or everything in this manifestation are things. All appearing in that basic screen, space or emptiness. They call it a cognizing emptiness. Not a vacuum or a void, but an emptiness suffused with cognizing or intelligence. It's an intelligence energy that's forming this emptiness. And Shakespeare pointed that out, he says emptiness is form. It is that cognizing or intelligence everything that's patterning shape informing all this manifestation. And he turned it around the other way and said the forms are nothing but emptiness. All things are empty. And all this manifestation is made up of things. You're a thing, I'm a thing, the tree's a thing, the flower, the seeds are all things. In that basic screen of emptiness. Emptiness is no thing. Space you can't find a centre to. Can you find a centre to space? We say this is where it begins. Can you find a circumference to it? It is no thing. And we, can you postulate or think of anything that could be outside of space? What would it be in? Hey. And you realise there's nothing you can think of, postulate, or imagine, or conceptualise, could be outside of space. Space is no thing. And all this manifestation is the content of space. 
Can something come from no thing? Well, you don't have to be a Rhodes Scholar to work that out either. Just recognise that some things cannot come from no thing. So all this manifestation appearing as things is only appearance, it's really no thing. And they tell you that when they say it's a phenomenal manifestation. This manifestation is phenomenal. Your dictionary definition of phenomenal is that which appears to be. <coughs> An appearance means it's seemingly so. Seemingly appears to be real. But it is not real as it appears. So you, me and all these so-called things are appearing to be real. Not realising you are real as the absolute, as the intelligence energy. You are real as the life, but as the pattern, shape and form, the body, mind, it's appearing to be real. And has actually, actually no reality about it whatsoever. Because it's changing. That pattern, shape and form is constantly changing and that body, mind, is transient. It's not the same body you had when you walked into this room and it's changing right now. And it'll continue to change. What is it that never changes? The image continually changes, but the life itself, the animating intelligence energy doesn't change. That keeps vibrating, patterning, shaping and forming and ringing about all the transient, the changes, but nothing has ever been added to it, nothing ever taken away from it, because it is that no thing. It's life which forms, shapes and patterns of everything. That is what you are. And it continues and will continue to express. Take the life out of that body. And you've seen plenty of bodies with no life in them. That body is a corpse. And before it breaks down or rots, or it starts to break down and rot, well then it gets bacteria, germs and words which get life out of it while they're breaking it down. But it's still got the eyes before it rots, it's still got the ears, it's still got the heart, the lungs, the kidneys, or the brain. All those organs that are keeping it going now and doing such wonderful work, they're in it. But the life or the power has gone out of the body. So what good is it without that life? Where does it go? As we pointed out before, it's the content of space. The vibrating pattern of energy in space. Has it ever left the space? It hasn't. Can anything ever leave the space? It can't. So where does it go? Back into the space. But it's not the same. Good analogy is like a computer's got all that information in it, can get some amazing information out of it, but and it was formed to express through and all, utilise all these information that's in it and bring it up. But without the power on, what can you get out of the computer? Nothing at all. So these patterns have been able to form computers, just the same as that life essence has formed these patterns. 
to experience and express itself through. And those experiences and expressions seem very real. But because they're divided and separated and believed to be so, they cause the pain, the anger, the fear, the depression, the guilt, the shame, the remorse, the jealousy, the envy. All the psychological suffering comes about from the energy of belief that goes into them. And the belief is never the real. It's not the fact. The definition of belief is an unquestioned acceptance of something in the absence of reason. It means we haven't questioned it. We haven't investigated. We haven't looked into it. Acceptance of an alleged fact. These alleged facts our parents told us, we learnt from schools and things like that. We take it to be real. Acceptance, and we're accepting it. Acceptance of an alleged fact without positive knowledge or proof. And we're also told, which we don't investigate, that the false can stand up, cannot stand up to investigation. So see that. Wouldn't it be wise to see if that statement is true or not? And question your beliefs? Have a look at them, see if they're true. And what I found, when you do question them, those that are not true will fall apart. The idea that I am this person will fall apart, seeing that not true. And you've questioned so many beliefs and looked at me. You go outside of a cloudy day, when you say the sun's not in the sky, you know the sun never leaves the sky. So you think it's gone, and believe it's gone, it's not true. A rainbow, you go outside and you see a rainbow on a cloudy day, you believe there's colours in the sky. But when you look into it and investigate, you'll see those colours are not real. They're only the sun shining through the mist, seemingly forms clouds that appear as a rainbow. You go up and try and grasp it, there'd be nothing there. Look at a lot of those things. If people stood on the shore years ago, looked out where the sea and the sky met, they were told, don't go out there, you'll fall off the edge of the earth. And people believe that. Who would believe it today? Because we've investigated these things and seen the truth about it. Investigate a little bit further and see that this body-mind that you believed in take to be real. Instead of trying to make it become something and believe it can become when becoming implies the future time and if you've looked into time and seen time's a mental concept, there's no such thing as a future. And realise you are being right now. And you can't negate that beingness. You can't say you are not. So it's there. But why don't we take it on board and say, I'm that pure being? Because we've got this habitual patterning that I am this person, and I need to do this, I need to pray, meditate, do this practice, do something else, and I will become. Hasn't happened, has it? Might not just dawn on you, maybe I'm looking in the wrong direction. And that might be the turning point. That's what needs to happen, and some of you know that, investigate and they've got a good take on this and they're expressing it and if you can express it get up and tell us about it it might resonate with somebody who hasn't got that understanding fully if they hear different words they might latch on to what I'm saying but another word might resonate with you 
And some of you are just looking into it and questions might come up. Ask them, don't hesitate to ask them. But we do hesitate because what's there? This conceptual image again, somebody will say something that I don't like or criticise what I'm saying or something like that. And that will make me fearful of people because they don't like me. We'll put on these concepts on and so we don't bother to question because we're fearful of what they'll think or what they say. But who the hell do you think is saying or thinking all that? If all these patterns are the non-conceptual ever fresh pattern, does it matter what anybody says, thinks or does? You see, they're just patterns, shapes and forms, non-conceptually. And if you know that you are the Absolute, if you are the Absolute, who is superior to you? Who can ever be superior to you if you are already the Absolute? Who can be inferior to you? So there's nobody that you're better than. Nobody who is better than you knows that you are better than them. And what would you want from the other person? What have they got or can have that you haven't got? If you have the same, if you are the same absoluteness and reality that they are, wouldn't it be available to you also? So recognise those things get into it or you'll do what you have to do or don't do anyway but to keep the party going just get into it away you go I have <laughs> pardon nice long spiel you can put your ears now and I would like to say welcome for those who came a bit late and welcome to the online community. We have 20 few people with us. And we have few comments that we didn't get to read last week. We went much over time and we had to skip them. So that was one from Vivek. Imagined I, ego, loves imagination. Mickey Mouse, Santa Claus, God. And Amanda says what's beyond confusion and clarity is self. Though it is undefinable, either comes or goes or located in lots of places. And uh, Dave says, the sense of who I really am feels the same from, what, from when I was a child to the present day. Letting go of the false ideas of who I am is all that's needed. A sculpture already exists in the block of stone. The sculpture merely removes the pieces concealing it. That's a nice metaphor. And Amanda says, beautiful things. Imagination has no self-energy. Our interest and belief is the fuel, which is actually fuel less. And nobody's right or wrong as there no body or body. There is no thing for how can it make right or wrong. Tanya says, thank you so much for this beautiful meeting. That was last week's meeting. <laughs> and... Um, Rosa says, when you recognize what you are not, you see what is. Amana says, truth cannot be thought or defined, put in words. And uh, Vivek says, there is no feeling, experiencing the truth. Amana's see, seer and seen mind are ever imagined or created. Nothing can be added or deleted. Rosa Notice the times I is being used when speaking to notice helps. And Lindsay, pointers pointing to that which is essential, takes the attention beyond thought into the resting still presence. Buddha was pointing to that which is, just as Bob is. The question is who is suffering and isn't that why we are all here? To awaken to falseness of psychological involvement. And Ram, uh, you. <laughs> it is not the known or nowhere. Both are concepts. It is knowing. The knowing is non-conceptual 
timelessness. And Donuts is love to Jane for what Jane was saying last week. And Amarna says, thanks means ignorance or not noticing. And grateful to Ram, non-conceptual cannot be put in words or thoughts. And Keith says, that sums it up. And Donna also says, ultimately no one is doing anything. No one is choosing or <coughs> no one is seeing. It is all seemingly arising. And Keith says, when you look, nothing is there. And Donna, not even you that needs to look. And Amana says, Bob was and is Buddha, no need to think or imagine my heart full reverence. And that was it. So we are up to date with all the comments. Uh, if anyone would like to open up and uh, say something, ask question or share or clarify or mm, argue with something from uh, the forum is yours. Let's see if there are any <laughs> comments there. Yeah, the Michael from today's meeting, Michael is watching us and is saying, good morning, beautiful people. So wonderful that you offer this, Bob and Kat, for those who can't make it in person. Much thanks and love. Thank you, Michael. Oh, we can also do it on Zoom tomorrow. Yes, Michael, you can come on Zoom tomorrow. Uh, that is mostly for American. This is our Polish Michael. But uh, whoever is out of our regular time zone, there is a meeting that is in the morning for for us and in the afternoon or evening for Americans tomorrow. And there are two other meetings on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Just a reminder, all the information on www.sailorbobadamson.com slash meetings. And now, please, Jamie is pointing, you, Dean is pointing at you. <laughs> <laughs> you, yeah, please, <laughs> <laughs> please, can you, would you? <laughs> I got the microphone. Mm. Yeah. It seems to be the story of my life. <laughs> um, look, I'm just happy to be here. I'm happy to see Bob. Um, very grateful <coughs> for these sharings. They've had enormous benefit on this pattern, um, <coughs> resulting in a lot of peace and. Uh, happiness and acceptance for whatever life delivers. Um, look, what happened here was just essentially a shift in focus from identification with the story that was playing out, a story of mainly it was sort of poor me, all that sort of stuff. Yeah and a shift from that into what Bob's pointing to, which is just that open, spacious, complete um, awareness where there are no problems. It's just, uh, it's just a sense of peace and I guess an uncaused happiness. It's kind of like, um, you know those optical illusions where you see the young woman and the old woman you know they're both in the same photo and it's just yeah. like sort of <laughs> seeing you've been focused on the old woman and then all of a sudden sort of pointed out mm. the young woman and the focus nothing happens but there's just like a shift of focus and it's like an aha and you, you can't see them both at once you're either locked in one or, or the other you, know, you can't see the old woman and the young woman at the same time. And uh, once you see the young woman, that's it. <laughs> Why would you go back? <laughs> it's just my preference anyway. <laughs> so, I mean, uh, hearing the spiel, Bob, and I've, you know, I don't, live in Melbourne anymore but when I come and visit and I hear your spiel or I listen to it you know the, it blows your mind every time you hear it and every time you you know not just that when you when you study it, some ancient text some ancient Tibetan text or 
one of Nisargadatta's texts or Siddha Rameshwar's and you read the stuff and it just kind of, it's like a, it's like a head, your mind explodes every time, so to speak, because, um, I mean, that it resonates with your beingness. So these words resonate and that emptiness kind of resonates with that, with that frequency and it just kind of seemingly opens up more and more. And, you know, I think Eckhart Tolle said once um, that there's no limit to this beingness, you know. It has no it has no depths, it has no boundaries, it has no point. So every time you hear it, it's like that that depth just becomes more and more pronounced. And that emptiness becomes more and more pronounced. Um Yeah, I don't know, I'm just waffling now, but but um Yeah, it's like a yeah, it's it's uh it's beginningless and it's endless and it's timeless so there's just no sort of there's no um, point where it starts no point where it finishes so you can keep hearing this and you can keep looking at this and it still kind of blows your mind every time mm-hmm. you know? yeah, this is my my go to if, if I ever get caught in my head I listen to you for a moment and, and catch the imagining and then there's no more troubling. So, thank you. I'm... I got a couple of comments from people online. Yes, yeah, so... Uh, this is from Byron. What is driving our consciousness and your words? Is it the wish to avoid pain and the wish to find peace? Are we in the happiness business here? And Amarnath is answering to it. Beautiful Byron, we know that we are, we do not know, we know. Isness is beyond Facebook or physical meeting. So that was one, and Keith says, Hi Bob and everyone, those messages are from last week. Yes, Byron, we did it intentionally because uh, (laughs) we've been over time last week and we just had to skip those messages, so we're catching up. And Amanas, meeting is no meeting which is beyond meeting. Thinking is both illusion thinker, non-illusion without thinker, no relation to self. Thought is both woman and man, also beyond. How funny is isness? Nisargadatta says food has become the world, neither woman or man is imagined. Yes, so that's uh, it. Anyone would like to comment? I think that what Byron was saying, whether we are in happiness business and uh, something uh, required answering, I'm not very sure. Well, the comment actually is not available anymore. <laughs> okay. So. Can I have the mic? Yeah, yes. Thank you. It's definitely the happiness business. <laughs> thank you. Actually, I'll just go this way. Uh, a U.S. politician, I remember a U.S. politician mentioned there are known knowns. There are things we know we know. And there are also known unknowns. There are things we know we don't know. And there are also unknown unknowns. There are things we don't know we don't know. I would like to, that's right, (laughs) I would like to add to it. uh, There is an unknowable knower or unknowable knowing that's not possible to be known. And (laughs) that's it. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you. That's great. I've got nothing intelligent to add to that. But uh, (laughs) I would like to say that um, when we look at things that occur, um, as themselves, if something arises as itself, it is just whole and perfect. There's no without reference to anything else, and that uh, is an exquisite ex- experience of natural experience of the bliss of um, the of, uh, sat shit and under. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, Basically, that's it. If, you, if one allows everything just simply to be as it is, 
without reference to anything else, without any comparison, without, uh, without any reference, referencing. Yeah, we were having fun coming down today and we were, we were just talking about how things are referenced to each other. How, you know, I know I'm here because I, I, I know about that place next to it. And, but what about that place next to it? I know it because of its relativity to the place that I was talking about before. You know, it's a kind of circular argument. And that's the nature of the, the mind. It's always looking for a reference, a, a truth in something because it is close to or relative to something else. But when one releases that relativity, you're, you're released to see things as they are in their perfection. And uh, nothing is left out of that. Yeah, that comment that said, are we in the happiness business? Well, you know, um, when there's no conflict, uh, which can only come from um, the mind, um, you know, because when there's dis-ease, it's in relation to the me and the other person, place or thing. So when that mind is no longer related to um, as a me, um, there is no conflict. There, there is, as Peter said, the the uncaused joy of being. So, yeah. So if that's the happiness business, we're in it. <laughs> I have the comment from uh, sure, sure. from Bill. Uh, there is just what's happening. Yeah. You can't get closer. You can't get away from what's happening. We tell the story about what's happening. But the story about what's happening is what's happening. <laughs> there is just this inescapable immediacy. There is no escape. It's full to the brain. It is immediate. There is no room for time, no room for space, no room for thought. There is just no thing. Look closely, investigate, and see that this immediacy is illuminated, illumined by the light of pure knowing. It is not knowable, it is just for no one. And Amanas says, to whom is the business, who is the customer or seller? It's a Facebook or illusory physical business originating from non-illusory self. The reference mind has no reference, thanks Peter White. And Rosa says, happiness is. And by the way, I, I expect he would probably want to talk about some needs and, and stuff like this. That's uh, usually the case. But uh, really what we are about is looking beyond concepts sure. of happiness, non-happiness, suffering. Really, the pointers are beyond the conceptual mind, which constantly engages with imaginary overlay, which instead of experiencing, like Bill says, reality as it is through all the five senses, focuses into the thinking, creates the story, identifying the character with the story, and goes on in that realm which has been overlaid, and reality as it is, is being overlooked, ignored. So defining what business, wha what we do about it, is already going way too far. Of course we're using words, there's no other way to communicate. And we are trying as close as we can to go beyond and point beyond the words and language. That's the point. <laughs> and there is Byron saying, yes, somehow being and connecting with kindly people does seem to have an impact on happiness. You're totally right, uh, Byron. Everything has impact on happiness. Even the sunshine, even the, the, the right biome, gut flora, everything. And the kind people, the love, the everything has the impact on everything because <coughs> everything is one it's just vibrating into different pattern so it does impact yeah and you know you often say cat on i say how are you you say i'm happy <laughs> yes. yeah and it's because that joy of being is if if you have to name it something mm. it is happiness itself yeah yeah now is your turn. <laughs> Can't escape. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I think, uh, 
with happiness or joy or mm. you could call it, you could lay when the concepts are no longer believed in there's a automatic like there's this, there's this what's left like this, you could call it peace or love or joy or happiness or you could have all these different labels but I, I just find like some of the most serious and important issues are the most hysterical <laughs> in, the, in the world like <laughs> because they're seen in the light of what is and it's it's a concept like mm. and the more someone's riled up about a concept the more hysterical it becomes <laughs> <laughs> because it's like how can you like it's all right like it's not real mm. and and then it, it, it seems so real to whatever yeah. um and it's just so unreal and uh, the more real it seems the more unreal it appears to, to me <laughs> in a sense like just just how it feels sometimes and it's a bit embarrassing to laugh at you know the most um <laughs> ridiculously you know bad situations I guess but the laughter's not on the out it's not laughing at anyone or anything yeah. it's laughing at the at the whole show mm. and how we got ourselves in this weird position um yeah it's exit laughing laughing that's mm. a that's phrase right. from a course in miracle oh, is it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah thank you it's beautiful Yeah, pretty hard to follow up with Bob Spiel because I think you nailed every point in the book. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, nailed them spot on. But there's one in there, I think, that uh, one amongst the many that's really powerful is, is this fact that there's no doubt about our being. There's no doubt about our consciousness. There's no doubt that we are awake and we are present. Mm. And if you are seeking, that's the thing to latch on to, make the center of your seeking. Every time you're in doubt, or you're or actually seeking, just recognize the fact that there's no doubt of your own presence. Yes, beautiful. And continue to recognize the doubt, that there's no doubt that you are here, you are present, you're aware of your own being. And that's the full stop mm. Bob talks about. And there's really no more to it than that. It's just. Yeah. That's all there is to do. Beautiful. <laughs> In fact, Miss Argadata called it a diamond of good fortune. Mm -hmm. uh, give it to Paul. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's wonderful, isn't it? We're dealing with absolutes there. We're yeah, dealing with, with, you know, mm. uh, We're dealing with something which has no relative meaning. You can't, there's no, no, no point in trying to make any comparison or relative understanding mm -hmm. about that sort of thing. Only dark. You are here now. Can you speak up? Speak up. You are here now. You are, um, you know, um, an absolute uh, condition, which, uh, yeah, I've said enough, basically. So I want to thank Bob to remind us a lot of things, remind me a lot of things that I ignore usually due to tinnitus and resistance. And uh, one of the reminders or pointers to so-called me is uh, watch your mind, how it's operate. Uh, for me, it was helpful during the day or daily activities for a week or two that I'm following this pointer, this specific pointer, to somehow map my mind so then maybe I can um, predict its strategies in the future and its movements in order to uh, prevent to not get into, get into it. Thank you. Thank you. Julia, did you want to say something? Or? Oh. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so I was found it quite interesting what Bob said in the last sentence with um, I forgot actually what he said but I had a picture what it's looking like and then what you said with comparing and it was resonating in a way because I'm dealing last week I dealt a lot with uh, jealousy and I'm trying to get on top of it and <laughs> Um, what was interesting with you when you're saying you you p 
put in a relative to something that is what I realize what I'm doing. I put something in relative to that or compare to that. And that sort of brings up the emotion. Oh, that is what that is. Oh, oh I would like to have that too right now and then rather than saying oh it's everything is okay with me because it was so interesting that I never felt that my whole life like this mm-hmm. I was always fine I felt like mostly fine and now it happens and then what I was also thinking is that uh, you're already dead when Bob says you're already dead and when you feel jealousy and you're seeking for love from another person, one of the other person where he gets the love, the other person get the love from, and everyone has the same body mind structure, then they wouldn't get more love than you already have already. So that's what I was understanding when you're asking for love. That person, if you're in a natural state already, is love. Mm. And you also have that, why are you seeking it? <laughs> from someone else. Mm. It's just desire, yeah, pleasure. Yeah. The, mind, the, mind works, the mind works in the pairs of opposites. Um, and it's interesting to watch that when you know you're not the mind. Um, you know, desire, fear, pleasure, pain, you know. Um, and, you know, to put the focus on the absolute rather than the machinations of the mind which are always going to be exactly that because they can only work in those parameters desire fear pleasure pain happy sad you me you know and that's where all conflict arises but yeah but you can't add anything to (coughs) something that's absolute so you're focusing more on that presence that you are um, and just I- interestingly watching how the mind operates, curiously, you know, seeing how it can only, can only trap you. <laughs> it can only go one way or the other. I think what, what's even better than that ultimately yeah. is to e- go beyond that and just lose interest. Yeah, yeah, in the you mind. do. You do <laughs> lose interest. You just uh, you totally lose interest. It's like in that it boring person at a party that you're <laughs> yeah. trying to get away from. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That's yeah. a good one. I love yeah. that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just, yeah. just boring person at mm. a party. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or your mother when she's those. nagging you and you just you don't hear. It's just sort of <laughs> there somewhere. But mm. I have. I've totally lost interest. Sometimes, mm. I'm, like Dean said, I have a bit of a giggle. Like. Mm. Something will come up and it'll make me laugh because it's just <laughs> it's so ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. But uh, other than other than that, mm. I, I just l- leave the mind to do what it's. It's like that mirror. Like mm. none, no image is ever going to stick to that mirror. When everyone leaves in an hour, the mirror yes, is going to be is going to mm. be clear clear again. And the mind's like that. You just it'll it'll move through just and just do its thing. It and it's amusing. It is amusing to watch it. Yeah, it's very amusing. Because <laughs> you go, where the hell did that come from? You know. Well, yeah. Well, that's 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 the um, uh-huh. the realization that 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 the thoughts are really none of our business. They're just mm. they're just coming up out of our conditioning and mm. things we've heard and mm. you know it's like uh, like John Lennon said. You know, nothing you can sing that can't be sung. Nothing you can do that can't be done. It's all just repetition yeah, and, and stuff repetition. that just comes up and and moves along. It's yeah, we're all in tribute bands, aren't we? <laughs> 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 it's all a tribute. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, tribute, tribute to love, yeah, or the presence, or and it's wrongly attributed to separate self. <laughs> yeah, wrongly, totally wrongly. Mm. Uh, like when you when yeah. you recognise what you are, there's like a it's almost like there's a space that's created around the, the whole thing, not around all the thoughts and the body and everything. And there's like a, it's like, a, it's like a looking, like a witnessing consciousness. So as Nisargadatta would say, that you can see the whole thing happening, mm-hmm. like in real time. And it's just happening. Like there's just thoughts arising, and you know, and all this stuff that's going, all the emotions and feelings coming up. Mm. 
but there's like a space around it so it's it's almost like you're looking at somebody else mm. Mm. you know it's like an out of body experience in a sense yeah it's yeah. like an out of body experience yeah. it's like opaque it's yeah it's like the thoughts yeah. become it's just seen through yeah they're kind of there but and sometimes there's interest in the thoughts but but generally they're just sort of clear or opaque I don't know that's a sort of mm. seems here and you could argue that like somebody was saying is this the happiness was it the happiness business or something yeah, yeah. it's it's really more the recognition business yeah. why that recognition of who you really are because there's a cognizing that's happening all the time mm. you know but that cognizing has been overlaid with the story of me that's right. right and the, that's the story right. of me has appeared in that cognizing and all this energy of belief has gone into the story and it just seems very very real and then society reinforces that all the institutions government family us to fa- name education place. everything mm. constant you, you walk outside the store and everybody around you is reinforcing this notion of self me 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 mm. you know, and everyone's life revolves around this notion of me it's right notion of self so it, it appears very real and all this energy goes into it um, but when that's seen through then it's just um, the story will continue but then it, like like I was just saying before there's like a space that just sort of appears around this story and it's, it's no longer seen as this horrible <laughs> monstrosity that it once was <laughs> still not very nice but it's at least it doesn't have a you know it doesn't have that um that that pedestal that it once did have you know uh, bob requested me to ask you guys if you had anything uh, to ask or add or are you are you happy us yeah. yes in particular yeah okay. um, he's an old timer <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, no pressure. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to say anything? No. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I can't, I, if it comes to me, I'll start. Okay. <laughs> okay. Who asked that? Sorry. Bob. Oh, Bob did. Oh, yeah. Are you sure? Real pressure, yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Boss man's on you. Sorry. Uh, I'll take it. Uh, oh, you want it. it? Yeah. Thanks. Um, as you were speaking, I thought that um, you know it all boils back to the idea that we can't be a thought, we can't ever be a thought. It's just it's patently obvious, isn't it? How could you be a thought which had to, you know, when the thought dies, you don't die with it. So our insistence is that we are thoughts. That we are a, um, a, a passage of thoughts. Somehow our existence uh, resides there. And we're believing that, but that alone, if we just simply undo that, we'll discover that, you know, that can't possibly be, and therefore I can't be there. I must be, my being is existing elsewhere for a moment, in a sense, pretending to be wrapped up and be in those thoughts. That's impossible. Um, the, the notion, and also the notion, your notion is jealousy. <coughs> um, it's all occurring within the confines of you in your mind, of course. Yeah. When you think about it, the other guy is not thinking about you at all. Yeah, you're thinking about that guy, that fucking asshole. <laughs> he's, yeah, he's screwing my ex-wife. Or <laughs> whatever he's doing. Yeah, he's not thinking about you at all. He never did, or he never, he very rarely does. And in fact, uh, other people are only ever existent in our minds for a split second during the day, even the people that you're married to. Mm. You, know, you don't think about them all the time. You, they're not right there in your consciousness all the time. Mm. They're a fleeting moment, really. Mm. And that, that's an interesting consideration, isn't it? That in truth, those ideas can't be true either. Mm. And yet, um, it's kind of like a dot on a TV screen that automatically fills out to become the totality of your consciousness when you give it uh, give it all that energy that's what it does give it energy and the dot becomes the full screen I just need to 
change the channel or something. Turn the TV off. Right, thank you. I have a couple of comments from people who are with us online. And I think I've skipped a couple because the phone is not... I'm going to think uh, here ink is here and ink. And then uh, Dave replying to Amarna's uh, comment about Nisargadatta saying that food has become the world, neither woman or man. Dave says, Amarna, what a beautiful room of intricately arranged food we are watching. <laughs> <laughs> and Byron says, we are not only present here, but also worthy, acceptable, knowledgeable, lovable, connected, and real. And Vivek says, that's a beautiful story, by the way. It's sweet. Uh, Vivek, gift of mind is a trap of suffering, birth, death. Amana says, watching is watch, time plus ink. <laughs> and that, that's the fun, nothing coming from no one. Byron says, recognition is kind of happiness. Kind of one could say, well, all the matter of defining words have to be careful. Amanath says, here say is stay here. <laughs> <laughs> Amanath also, we, we are we, nothing can be added to it or deleted from it. Mm. And Byron, it wasn't that guy, it was your ex-wife. I think that was for Joseph. And Amarnath says, jealousy is me acting as he, he <laughs> acting as me. <laughs> <laughs> to how funny is this dream? So you want to get the story down to the vibration, down to sensations in the body. Then even jealousy is too much of a label. You just be present with whatever is arising. If there is a, you know, like a heart contracting, then you just be present, be curious about that particular sensation. Or if, is it a, you know, a lump in the throat or not in the gut, like Bob often says. Instead of labeling it something and following the story of the guy or ex-wife or whoever, the story there, mm. you bring it back to the present sensation, to mm. what is happening regardless of the narrative. Narrative gives it a name and offers the, the little trip, a train of thought. But this present moment has other senses too and you can really be present with the sensation. And it becomes curious. Instead of being a suffering, it is an interesting occurrence in that field of consciousness. That's... Uh, <coughs> Peter, you wanted to... The mic? Uh, give him a minute. Yeah, because I realized how the images are coming up and they're not real. <laughs> Oh, not not uh, occurring to my image. Yeah, that was uh, interesting. Why you said uh, that guy? Uh, for me, there is no guy. I'm jealous of. Uh, um, but yeah, that sensation was uh, mm. good. Uh, that uh, I was looking into that sensation, and I know it was all mostly in my heart, more on the left side, and mm. and one a bit lower in that area, <laughs> but very. I don't know how you call that in English, but solar, solar solar. yeah, solar plexus. Yes. Mm. Um, they were there, quite intense, um, and uh, yeah. So um, it was more about that partner, I say, uh, where I am seeing uh, interactions with other people, or she's mm. talking about interactions with other people, and then I was trying to trace back what is that there for me and that there for me was basically I didn't have that presence with that person uh, so uh, and of course concepts as well but also observations as well so mm. uh, where I noticed uh, why she's smiling to the guys not to the women's <laughs> and uh, she said she does to everyone the same and so her picture was at this moment different that what she believed she was it so um, but then in saying that that is actually not about me it's about her pattern yeah. and so therefore that's what she's seeking and actually has nothing to do with me in the end mm. so yeah 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I wanted to say something. Yeah, um, get the mic. I, I used to get nervous before I sang, and one day Bob said, um, don't, don't label it nervous, you know. You know, if you're going to, you know, just look at the sensation, it's the energy you need to do the performance. And so that can be applied to anything. Don't label it this, that or the other. It's just the energy required in that present moment to for the action figure to take action, whatever that action is. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Well, you, you taught me that too, Jane, and I, like, um, it was fantastic. I used to get ang what I called anxiety for years and studied psychology and all the rest of it. And when you really sit with whatever's happening without a label or without a concept, wow, <laughs> it was never anxiety to begin with. Yeah. It was like energy, mm. it was just fantastic yeah. energy yeah. flowing. Yeah. It's yeah. like, well, hang on. I've been suffering all my life, thinking that I've had this anxiety. And it's not; a, it was never anxiety to begin with. So anxiety was a label, like getting on a roller coaster. Yeah, yeah. it's the same sensation, yeah. but you don't label it as a negative yes. thing. It's no, exciting right. because it's you, exciting. wow, this is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you, yeah, you label, you yeah. bring the word to yeah. it, and then you bring all the baggage of the past yeah, yeah, times yeah, that you've had anxiety, yeah, yeah, yeah. and that's you bring an, all yeah. that into the present moment, <laughs> rather right. than just sitting with, wow, my heart's exhilarating, yeah, and I'm exactly. feeling a bit of adrenaline yeah. it's just the same as if yeah. you got on a roller coaster it's yeah. the same yeah, sensation exactly. but on the roller coaster you go wow yeah. this is yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on a roller coaster there's no threat to me that's why we can go on a roller coaster mm. and we can enjoy the, the the sensations and the feelings because we know there's no threat to me in a situation yeah, where we're it's gonna end. we know it's yeah. going to end in a situation when you where you're about to sing or you're about to do something there's a threat to the self-image. That's where the anxiety and all the fear, because now me, yeah. I'm, I'm going to get hurt by this. I am, to that I'm yeah, going to get right. embarrassed right. or, you know. That's right, that's right, exactly. Or you watch a scary movie, you know, and, and you can enjoy the fear of the scary movie. But again, it's because you know, you're not going to, nothing's going to happen to you. Like the, like the, the poltergeist isn't going to jump out of the screen and start <laughs> attacking you, right? It's just, a, it's just a movie, you just know it. But in, in, in everyday life, when we get scared or when we get anxious, it's because it's me. The me f is threatened. The, the self-center is under attack. Still and then the there's, you know. <laughs> so ultimately, as Bob says, it always comes back to investigate and see, does this me have any substance, any independent nature? Is it real? Right. And that's ultimately what this whole exercise is about, is looking and, and investigating the self-center and really looking and seeing. And one of the best ways of doing that, one of, one of Bob's best pointers is watch the mind and see how it operates. Because in watching the mind, you see the, the machinations of the self-center yeah. come and go and how it operates and how it tries to do this and how it tries to sneakily you know, manipulate and, and create stories and little dramas and et cetera, et cetera. I find that the simplest one that I <coughs> share with a lot of people now, which is Bob's greatest point, is just what's wrong with right now? Yeah. 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 Me too, me too. Yeah. I share mm. that one as if well. If you don't think about it, what's wrong? Mm -hmm. and you yeah. can't find anything yeah. wrong. Mm. It's just cut straight to Don't it. stop. Yeah. I have <laughs> the beauty of this is the immediacy of like all these pointers that it just helps so immediately. Is there's um, it's it's good for those of us who like the immediate gratification <laughs> the immediacy last night I was I got I, I got a little bit pissed off I was with my kid and it wasn't the one I was pissed about but he was like we were talking about going into the story well the, this the, you wouldn't have a story without a me to have a story but and yeah I, I, it was it was just beautiful that nothing had to change in the environment or in the circumstances. All that all that happened was it was a quick oh yeah because I was telling him like he wanted he he wants to be able to vent. I think that's what most people want to do. I just got to vent. I'm like, but that's that's telling the story the, of the me, and and the it's all. <laughs> That, that's what it seems most people think is the solution of going into that. 
And it was just so, yeah, I went, I kind of, what happened was I just went, did kind of, well, I didn't do it, of course, but it was a going from, you know, to huh, noticing this very intense sensation and then just immediate, it's immediate to, to step out of the, the thinking and all that. It's, I don't know if I'm explaining this well mm -hmm. right now, but it was, it's really nice to also have this beautiful community mm. of people who can remind you when you when you don't catch yourself. Mm. I don't know if I'm making any sense here. Yeah, you are. Okay. I, have a, I have a good question here from, uh, from Byron, who says, uh, there is Amanas also saying, observer or me is the world as is an illusion. And Byron says, who is saying don't label it? Is it the absolute or somebody else? Or who says anything? Or who say what's wrong with right now? Or who say look at the moon? Or who say look at the finger? Uh, ultimately, there is absolute, there is only one. So now, if you have a, a, a song coming from the radio, is the radio singing a song? No, it is the absolute. Uh, ultimately, that's, that's the only answer, always and ever. The better question would be, why do you want to <coughs> figure out who is speaking or what is speaking rather than looking at that moon? That is the best question. Pointer, if it resonates, you take it. If it doesn't resonate, <coughs> take another one. Someone says, look at the moon. Oh, look, there is a dirt under the toe, under the nail. It doesn't matter. If the pointer speaks to you, good. But who is speaking the pointer? Why is it here? Is it where? Who is there who is hearing the pointer? Is it me or is the absolute? Or all those questions are the secondary questions which aim at engaging with the mind in order to overlook the pointer. And thank you for bringing it up, Byron, because that is always worthy of highlighting. If the pointer, what's wrong with right now? Who is saying it? Is it absolute saying it? Or is it Bob? Or is it Dean? Or is it Jamie? Is it radio or is it TV station? That is overlooking the profoundity of what is wrong with right now. Once again, thank you for saying it because that's always worthy of highlighting. And um, there is a few more comments. Stay in presence, says uh, Vivek. Amarna says, nervous, be near us, isness or self, you are going far. Uh, far away and both no one and everyone both are part of the label this was Amarna's answer who is saying it the good idea is to actually not even answer it but just who wants to know is sometimes the answer or, or Julia gives it uh, who gives it yeah. that's that's actually a nice kind of uh, dropping the, the, the ball into the other <coughs> court but yeah it is always missing out on what's offered uh, now Amana says no mediator in the immediate and Keith says watch the mind and see how it operates Ca that came up last week too and Byron says yes there is something wrong with right now it is the future the problem that right now will not last well that's your religion Byron if you are happy and you don't suffer that's fantastic He's but thinking if, you about do, if you do yeah, you may have, you may, what, what Jamie was just offering, just see if you can uh, uh, shift the perception, or if you would like to have individual appointment with Bob, maybe he can explain it better, uh, if you want to, because... The future is just an idea. Yeah, yeah, if, you, if you're happy, I mean, you know, there are people who are perfectly happy uh, living in the imaginary world with the imaginary threats in the imaginary future, when they are important, and... I, and it is fine. It's really only for those who actually want to question and want to find freedom from that type of imaginary threats. Uh, those who don't, absolutely, there is no, we don't go like Jehovah Witnesses knocking the door <laughs> and <laughs> trying to convert people to non-dualism religion. Everyone who is here is out of their allegedly uh, imagined free will. <laughs> But again, thank you, Byron. That's a really good point. I really appreciate your contribution.
Yeah, when, when you first sort of understand. Yeah. He says it is all my story. Uh, can we speak one at a time? Hello, hello. There is quite a few. There's a couple of mics, and those guys will not hear us if we speak all at the same time. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, so this is Keith says it is all my story. Amarna says uh, thanks, Keith is missing the story. Lindsay okay. say I suppose that is why understanding is all. That's what Bob said on the beginning. And Keith says, it's kind of funny, but it's also a shock how pervasive it is. And Dale Allison says, so many beautiful reminders, to reminders today to just rest in the presence awareness. All the knots and conflicts fall away. Dave says, Bob, how important is faith or surrender in practice? Any tips? Would you like to speak on faith or surrender in practice? Now, Dave, we are uh, basically pointing out that practice creates the imaginary practitioner and it reinforces the self. So practice is kind of, uh, this is the word that we don't really uh, use. It, it may have wrong associations. And you may look at it as if the fate of surrender happens, that's what life facilitated. If it doesn't happen, that's what life didn't. Uh, but again, you can, Ask Bob anytime. Come up for a coffee. Amana says, thank you all and love you all. Faith is the practice which is naturally inherent as natural state. That's the answer from Amana. Bob doesn't define it the same way, but it may resonate more. Uh, Tanya says, thank you all so much. So much beauty. What's wrong with right now if you don't think about it? Nothing. Without thought, no me and nothing wrong. Not sure why inquiring still happens. Looking spontaneously, happening maybe also a bit of entertainment, laughing out loud. And thank you all, says everyone. So if there is anyone, because you had the conversation, that want to wrap it up and share it with us. Otherwise, we're just saying that you know when you first <laughs> when you first know who you're not, you want to share it with everybody. Julia mm -hmm. would identify with that. Yeah. Uh, and I said, oh, "Have you got three hours?" That's how I used to be when. I, I was first sort of uh, turned on by knowing who I wasn't, if you mm. like. And mm. now it's more when people want to hear it. That's all I was saying. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah that's part of it, the acceptance is also <coughs> accepting everybody as you find them and no one needs to be changed yes. Yes. or hear this message. Everyone is fine, whether mm. they have the understanding or not. That's is right. irrelevant. Absolutely. You just life lives out plays out how it's going to play out and right. all of that sort of falls away that's right if, if there's a curiosity there people will find you and talk to you about it Absolutely. otherwise yeah who beautiful. cares yeah, yeah who cares <laughs> beautiful oh, that's my favorite yeah, um, yeah you're you're all just, that. oh sorry regarding faith you know the usual conception of faith is is it something that occurs or an event brings it about and, and then it has to be maintained, you know, and strengthened and reinforced mm, yeah. and hung on to, you know. Mm. And, uh, and, and you hear this expression in Christianity, oh, they lost their faith, what a disaster, you know. Well, anything you can lose is not worth having, you know. Yeah. It's Beautiful. just not worth having. So, you know, just... <laughs> You don't have to hang on to anything. Everything you, everything you really need or ever want is already present as your own presence. Brilliant. Uh, yep. <coughs> mm. So I'm not, I'm not really a, a faith person myself. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. Yes, you are that fully perfect. Nothing needs to be fixed. And